Hello guys and welcome back to another building tutorial for MCrater. So today what we're going to work on is getting the elements all built in so we can start building tomorrow or next week I guess. So uh, what we're going to do is we have our textures from last episode. We got the leaves, the log end, the log side, and the sapling that will be a basically setting up. So we will be doing that. Uh, let's quickly just import these. What we can do is we can drag them from our folder from our Windows desktop and then we can just drag them in. I'm going to select block and then it should um, be imported into our resources for our textures. So that's our block textures. We need to do that for all of our um, blocks. So there's the that one and there is this one and there is also the sapling that we need as well. And once we do that, uh, what we can do is we can start import or working on the elements. So we're going to need to go to our blocks tab or blocks element and then we're going to set maple leaves and then we're going to select the block base and then we're going to select leaves and that will change the texture that we need to import this is i think for the particles so we'll select this and uh pretty much everything on this other this tab here is complete for leaves if we go to boundary blocks there's nothing we really need to do here because it's grayed out and uh, for the material or the creative tab, we probably want that under decorations as where leaves are normally. Uh, for the hardness and resistance, uh, let's quickly take a look at what um, resistance leaves have. So Minecraft leaves. And we'll just take a quick look at property so blast resistance which is also known as resistance is two and hardness is two so we're going to need to set these to wait was that two or 0 0.2 0 0.2 pardon me so let's uh, do 0 0.2 for both of these uh, pretty much all the other settings are fine as is and the sound on step what we want uh or the sound set what we're going to do is we're going to set that to uh let's quickly take a look at the page again and then we'll scroll down and it should be listed down here somewhere so we want um block broken grass block or grass blade <laughs> grass break so we want our grass sounds and stuff like that so we're going to set um i think grass is plants i'm pretty sure it's plant so we'll set it to plant uh you can also set the custom things and search for the sounds individually if you want um but most of these are actually set to um the grass sounds so we should be fine the way it is and uh, then we want to select a tool I think the tool for this is uh, shears broken with any tool so shears is generally the tool to break it with but I don't think that's an option here so we'll just leave it unspecified uh, the harvest amount, uh, we can set that to zero. It doesn't really need a harvest amount uh, for that. And um, we will set uh, the creative pick item. Actually, we don't need that either. All these other settings are pretty much good to go as is. So we'll go to the next property. And this is basically update tick and stay the same. The tick randomly, I think that that's fine to leave the way it is. And then we need default for the map color. This should be set to foliage. Pretty sure um, leaves are under foliage. And um, flammability. I do know the leaves are flammable. So they are flammable for 30. So let's set that to 30. 
And then for reaction to being pushed, can't remember what that is. So we'll search up pistons. And it should tell us on this particular page what the properties are for it. So leaves are breaks when pushed, turns to drop when uh, apply, basically when it happens. So can't be pulled. All right, so basically what that means is we need to set the reaction to being pushed to push only and uh, it can't be pulled so it won't be able to go backwards and um, so that's the setting that we want for that one AI finding that's fine to leave it the way it is uh, random offset we don't really need to do anything there uh, for other things on this particles are fine the way it is uh, the tick uh, MBT and in inventory we don't need to enable I don't think and uh, fluid storage and energy for forage we don't really need to do uh, triggers uh, we'll get back to this in just a second generation will leave the way it is so we'll save that and uh, let's quickly create the logs now so we'll go into our block again we'll go maple logs or we'll just say log I think it's log like that and then we'll set our side textures so that should be this one and then we'll set our top and our bottom textures here uh, we also want to set this to uh, rotation uh, log rotation right here and that will give it the same properties for rotation as logs and uh, for the transparency transparency type unless you're using custom models this should stay as solid the rest of the values are fine the way it is uh, you don't really need to configure anything down here bounding box again unless you're using custom models you don't really need to configure this uh, for this though um, material type should be set to wood the building block should be under building blocks here and I think can't remember exactly what logs are for the um, properties so we'll go and quickly search up that on my uh, minecraft wiki so logs and it should be right here so blast resistance is 10 so we need 10 for that and what was the other one two for hardness so we'll set that in that uh, jump factor, all that could be left the same. Uh, has gravity, we don't really want that. Uh, any of the other properties are fine. For the sound, it should be set to wood. Uh, the tool able to destroy, we want that to be an axe. And the tool harvest uh, setting, we'll set that to zero. Um, loot table and all that, it can be left the same. So advanced properties, uh, again, all this can be basically set up the, the same way as what we need. And uh, the block map color should be set to wood, I think. Pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, reaction to being pulled, this should be normal. Uh, pull and uh, push from what I remember. And flammability, this should be five. So we'll set that to five right now. And everything on this page otherwise is set up the way it should be. Uh, this is fine to leave the way it is. Uh, that's fine. All these are fine and generation is fine. So now that we got those two things out of the way, what we need to do is create a couple tags. Uh, the tags, um, if we go to Minecraft Wiki again and type in tags, And we should have this one that pops up right here. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we have a whole bunch of little tags on the side here. These are under, under the Minecraft namespace. So what we're looking for is one that says 
uh, logs and I think the other one is leaves so I just want to confirm that it hasn't changed so scroll down until we get to L so leaves is the the one for the leaves that we basically have to make so this should be under Minecraft namespace and then leaves. so what this will do is we'll apply or set the leaves to the properties for basically decaying and stuff for that so we need to create a tag we'll call it leaves and um, block tag and then what we'll do is we'll basically create a new tag we'll just remove the ending part right here and we'll leave just the leaves with the lowercase we'll set this to the minecraft namespace and we're setting this to a block and then what we want to do is we want to apply our leaves our custom leaves to this um, basically this tag so what this will do is it will help um, with the decaying and proper uh, finding of the blocks and stuff like that for the logs so we'll save that and then I believe we have one other one that we need to do and that is the logs it tells you what basically the properties of those logs are the tags are on the left here so for example this one um, has uh, some properties for the wood uh, basically the logs themselves so blocks around leaves so this is basically the one that we need for basically assigning the logs to basically not decay uh, distance state so it helps with the actual leaves up here so we'll set the our custom logs to our the minecraft namespace for logs as well so we'll set this logs and then we'll say block tag just because then you can use both item and block tag and then you can basically just delete that part there set it under the minecraft namespace and then we'll set our log block to this particular tag here all right so now that we got that all sorted out uh we still need our saplings so let's create that right now we'll go into our block and then what we'll do is we'll create uh, maple sapling and then we want to set our texture to cross model uh, rotation we don't actually need the transparency type we should set this to cutout and for the um, other properties it should be fine the way it is uh, we need to set our texture for our maple sapling and we want to give it a uh, tech item texture so we're going to quickly import one uh, from our desktop I have one a folder on here that I'm basically have the maple textures and stuff under so I'm going to just set that as our maple texture here and then that will come up instead of the 3d model for the actual sapling all right so boundary boxes uh, this can be um, shrunken down a little bit I'm going to do a tutorial on this in the near future but I'm going to set this to about 4 4 and then 12 and then 12 and then we'll move over to um, this properties for this so this should be under decorations if I remember correctly uh, material type should be I think plants uh, the hardness and resistance I, if I remember correctly it's zero and zero and um, so what we need to do is basically set the uh, can walk through block we want to enable this because you can actually walk through saplings and then all the other settings are pretty much good the way that it is uh, the custom drop what we want to do is actually just leave it the way it is um, tool able to destroy I usually set this to a axe but uh, you can basically just leave it the way it is set this to zero and we'll set the um, sound set to plant we'll move on to the next thing we probably want to set our tick rate for this to one because we'll be using some custom scripts to grow this the tree itself the 
block color on map should be set to foliage. And uh, I'm not sure if saplings have flammability or not. We'll have to uh, take a look at that. They might, but they also might not. So sapling. So flammable, no, they do not have any flammability properties. So we can leave that the way it is. Uh, let's see, everything else here should be the way it should be configured. Um, inventory, uh, we'll, we'll probably be using MBT for basically growing it. So we want to enable this and we're going to set the inventory to zero. And then we're going to uncheck these two block boxes right here. And then we can move on to the next thing. Uh, triggers, again, we'll get into the procedures and stuff in just a second and generation, everything should be set up the way it is. All right, so now that we got that done, uh, what we want to do is go back to our leaves and we're gonna create a uh, when block is broken by player. So when block is, pardon me, when block destroyed by player. So we're gonna create one of these procedures. And then what we want to do is, I'm gonna go back to the leaves I'm just going to quickly glance over at the properties for these uh, and see if there's a table or something that we can basically see. So, breaking speed, jungle saplings, other leaves, um, fortune. Not sure if obtaining. So this might have to do with the the, the drop chances. So uh, we should probably use these percentages for our drop chances, and we'll need to set the efficiency up as well. So I'm going to just move this to over to my other screen, and then I can basically just have a easy way of seeing it without having to open up mCreator. So what we need to do is we need a random procedure. So we're going to create a random number. So I'm just going to call it random uh, number or just num for short. And then we'll select number. And then what we can do is work with that local variable to create a random number. We're gonna have to run this on server side. So I'm gonna go to logic and then grab the not statement, place that down here. And then I'm gonna go to world data and I'm gonna scroll down where it says uh, is provided world remote client side. And then we're gonna place that down here. And that will basically the way that we have it set up is it's basically testing for the server side because of the not block. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set our random number to a random uh, random number. So that's basically what we're doing here. Uh, we also want to create a if statement. So we'll go down to flow control. And then we're going to test um, if the player because we're it's on the player side, right? So if uh, item in main hand, so we're going to go to entity um, entity data, grab item in main hand, and then what we're going to do is we're going to test. Uh, we need to see if it has uh, fortune on it. So and what level of fortune? So get level of enchantment fortune. And we're also going to want to test um, if it even has fortune, if possible. So let's see here. Should be an option for that. Just have to find it. Yep, has uh, an enchantment. So we'll need to replace these uh, provided items with our item in main hand so we can actually run it on the entity side rather than the item stack side and then what we need to do is we need to create a condition so i'm going to grab first basically the first thing that i want to do is test if it has um fortune on it 
So we'll find fortune in the list. Should be somewhere in here. So fortune, aspect, fortune right there. And we want to do the same for this one as well. So after that, uh, what we need to do is basically place that in here, set the logic variable to true. So we're basically testing if it's true. Uh, we also want to run a script if it's not. So we'll basically run an else statement. So we, if, it's, if it doesn't have fortune, then we'll basically run an alternate version of the script. And then what we want to do is basically test for the fortune uh, level if it does return true. So we're going to grab a blue operator like this, place that in here. And then what we want to do is we want to test if fortune is equal to level one, pardon me, one. And then we want to test for the other ones as well. So we'll create an else if and an else if for every level that there is. So for example, one, two, and level three for fortune. So after that, uh, what we can do is we can actually start working on the code for basically a random procedure. So the saplings should drop 5% uh, for 5% of the ch <laughs> five percent of the time uh, if using no fortune. So we'll start with that. Um, the other percent is for the uh, sticks is 2%. So that's a total of 7% that uh, it can actually drop as. So what we wanna do is we're going to subtract 100, um, or pardon me, one divided by uh, seven, and we get roughly, okay, pardon me, that might be a little bit wrong. Hold on a sec. Okay, so it's actually a lot simpler than what I was thinking that it had to be. So we have to go to our math operator, and then we're going to place it down here. And then what we're going to test for is our leaves first. So then what we need to basically do is test if a random number, so we'll grab our variable, place a random number here, and then what we're going to do is this number needs to be between, be between one and zero, so any point form after that uh, will work. So in our case, 5% uh, is exactly 0.5%. So if it's um, this particular value, but we actually want to test for a range. So what I'm going to do is actually add a and statement here, and then we're going to basically test for if it's equal to zero or greater, because we want it to start exactly at zero and then count up. And then what we want to do is see if it's less than 0 0.5, and or actually equal to or less than 0 0.5 and then that will test for our leaves so or pardon me our saplings then we want to test for the actual leaves themselves so we'll create a else if statement and then what we want to do is we want to change our operation from equal to or greater than to just greater than and we're going to set this to 0 0.5 and then what we want to do is basically set this value to 0 0.7 and that will be for our base um, procedure. Now this is going to be their sticks, where the other one up here is going to be our um, actual uh, saplings and stuff. So what we want to do is go to world management and there should be a block right here where it says spawn gem. Now this is going to be happening when the block is broken, right? So we want to basically drop our saplings for this one and I'm just going to offset the location so it is um, center for the block so 0 0.5 and I'm going to duplicate that three times and then I'm going to put X Y and Z in these coordinates and then I'm going to place them in the same spots that they were like so and what this will do is it will spawn our saplings in this one the other one down below should be our sticks. So we're gonna just select vanilla sticks. 
Uh, that should be under right here. And that's basically done for our alternate version for having no fortune. All right, so now we have our other values that we have to plug in. There is with fortune one, six point or yes, six point two five. So this would be um, zero point zero two zero point six two five, and then what we want is. 0.22 so that's a little bit different uh, we want to make sure that we start at that value again so we'll select that place that down where our sticks are and then what we need is to basically add 625 plus uh, what was the value 222 and that gives us Oh, that doesn't seem right, does it? I think I have that a little bit off. This should be 0 0.5, if I remember correctly, because it's only 5%, right? So that should be that. This should be 0 0.07. Uh, that should be 0 0.5. Six two, and that should be zero point six two as well. This should be uh, eight four zero zero point eight four. So those are the values that we need. Whoop, hold on a sec. Zero point zero eight four. Okay, because uh, the percent for the um, things a little bit different. All right, so those are the values that we need. And that goes under fortune one, duplicate this again. And then what we want is fortune two, which is 8.33%. So this should be uh, 8.3. And then we copy that over to our bottom one right down here. And then we want this to be uh, 0.25, so Eight, three, three, and then we want to basically plus uh, two point or two. Hold on a sec. Eight, three, three plus two five. Uh, one sec. All right. So the value is uh, ten point eight three. So we have to basically set this to 0.183 or pardon me 0 8 should be the value that we need for that value so that should be what we need and this will go under the second fortune value the last one is our fortune 3 this is a 10% chance so this should be 0. Point one and then this other one down here should be 0 0.1 and then the other value is uh, th uh, 3.33 uh, so that should be 1.33 for the other value and that's all there is to setting up the fortune so again you kind of have to do a little bit of math with that but that's basically what it is I uh, will actually export this so we can use it in the other script. Uh, we don't actually have to use the main hand, but we need the, um, so we don't even need that. We just need our basic one right down here. So I'll just move that up to here, set our variable and clean up this a little bit. We don't need that then. Okay, and then we'll export that as one to our desktop and then we can just delete that after and place that down here and then the actual drop amount is all set up. So after we got that all settled, uh, what we need to do is we're going to basically work on 
the explosion part for the breaking properties. And again, we're just going to import our procedure that we created. And that should run just fine because we're not using fortune. We don't need to set up the fortune script for this. Um, I think that's all the properties that we need to do under this particular one. That should be fine. Um, for the... Actually, before I do anything else, we should probably set a few other things that we should set up. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, not on there, not under this one, um, but we want um, for the other one for when broken by player. Oop. What we want to do is we want to test if the player is holding shears. So we're going to select that, uh, that one, and we want to test for the main hand item is not, have to find shears in here. So it should be right there. If it's shears, uh, then we want to just basically drop the, um, leaves where if it is um, not shears and basically we'll want to drop the have a chance to drop the other stuff so I'm just going to copy this uh, sapling one and then we want to basically just drop our leaves if they are shearing the actual leaves themselves and then we should probably go back to our properties and disable the drop for the actual um, leaves themselves and then make sure that the um, yeah that should be good so we'll just let we'll continue that uh, the other thing we need to do uh, the, the logs we don't have properties but we do have a script that we need to do for these saplings so we're going to actually create a update tick and what we're going to do is we're going to create a timer for this using MBT so we need a number variable and we're just going to call, call it uh, growth uh, timer. And then what we want to do is we want to grab an if statement and then we'll go to logic and then create a, we'll grab another uh, number one. And then we're going to test if the value is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, then what we want to do is we want to subtract that number. So we'll go under block and then we'll grab that, copy your name over, and then we want a math operator. So we'll go to math and then we'll place that down here. We'll set this to one and then we want to subtract that. So it's minus one. And then we need to get that variable as well. So it's the same variable that we're basically setting to, but minus one. And if it's not that, then what we want to do is have an else statement. And we want to basically set it as, uh, set it as, how long do we want to have this tree grow for? So we should probably set this to a random number to begin with. So what we need to do is we need to go random and then we'll set this to um, multiply that by, I don't know, we'll say five maybe. Uh, 50, 50 is, so 20 ticks per second, right? So we'll set that to that and then probably want about times five. So no more than five minutes. I'm not sure if that math will actually work, but um, basically what this should do is it's gonna get the random number. It's gonna multiply that by uh, 20 and then it's gonna multiply that by five. Um, so basically, or should it be random number times that? Or five times 20 
Okay, it should be something like that, I think. So 20 ticks per second. Uh, that should be actually 60 times 60. And I have no idea if that's going to work, but we'll find out. And basically what this will do is it will set the variable for the uh, actual thing. And we also want to test if the block is um, newly placed. So we're actually going to create a logic variable. And we're going to call this a uh, new tree. And then we're going to test if that is equal to true. And then we should be all set up. Now we do need, I'm going to actually copy the new tree variable. And if it's greater than, we don't want um, that, but we'll be basically going to one block added, creating a procedure, and then we, we want to basically set our two variables. So this one should be set to true, and this one should be set to our timer, which should be set to zero. So the other one uh, we need to do is basically set if it reaches um, actually, we should probably set this to negative one and then we'll go back over here and then we'll set equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, then what we want to do is we want to set our variable for new tree equal to true. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just create an else, or pardon me, false. And then what we're going to do is we're basically going to run a script underneath that. And we're going to test if it's false. And if it is false, then what we want to do is basically spawn our structure, but we don't have our structure built yet. So I am just going to basically set this to false for the time being so we can actually close the procedure. Uh, we'll come back to that and we'll actually uh, spawn our structure in where we need it in the proper location. But right now that's all that we need for that. Uh, this is set to a negative one because oh, that should be uh, this is set to negative one because um, when we're actually running the script for the first time, what we want to do is actually set this variable. So if we're testing for zero or greater than zero, so that's basically if it's zero, then we want to basically set our variable to tr our variable to false. If it's uh, true though, we want to run this script here. And if it's under zero, then we want to run this script to basically set our timer. So that's why it's set to negative one is so we can actually still use the variable to set it. If it was set to zero, then it would basically um, cancel out the procedure and basically not grow the tree properly in that particular time period. So that's why it's neg negative one. We also want to set this to a new tree equal true. Uh, so we can actually run this top script first. So that's basically all that there is to that. We'll save both of these and uh, we're all set up for basically building next episode. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.